Hi guys, thanks for watching. This is the instructional video for the linoleum printing kit. If you don't have a kit, you can get one by visiting my website in the description below. Um, I have a few options of other kits that all have instructional videos. I'll also be posting more kits um, at least once a week as the weeks go on. We'll see how long we need to stay in our homes for and how many videos I get posted, but be sure to keep checking back and stay current with what's going on because all the kits are super fun, um, things that you can create in the comfort of your own home. So yay for that. Uh, remember, if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back with you as soon as I can and try to get your, um, your question answered. So with that being said, I think it's time to get started. Um, <clears throat> And this is kind of how your kit will come to you. Again, if you need one, you can go visit my website and snag one. Just kind of unbag it here. Yay, you are so awesome. Um, just a little re note reminding you that you are learning something new, you're trying something new, and I'm excited to help open that door for you and see what else you'll create with it. And also to please post, tag, share, um, I'm really missing having people in my studio right now. So I, I love seeing what you create during my workshops and that's like the biggest part that is missing for me. So if you could please post pictures of what you create and tag me in them, I would love to see them. Um, and follow me on social to you know stay up to date on what's going on. So, so you're awesome, thank you. All right. Oop, just ripped through this with my Hulk fingers. <laughs> Let's go ahead and unbox this beauty. All right. Um, so in your kit, you should have an ink pad, a pencil, a linoleum um, speedball carving tool, a piece of um, like rubbery, easy cut linoleum-esque material. Um, five sheets of this nice off-white cotton cardstock. You can tell it's obviously very different from computer paper, super thick. Um, that's what we're going to be printing on. So go ahead and set that aside in a space that stays clean. We want to keep that clean. And you should have your design sheet that you chose. There are three options for design sheets. There's the floral sheet, um, the insect sheet, and the geometric sheet. I'm gonna be working from the floral sheet today. And then you should have a piece of tracing paper. I only have a little half sheet, but I gave you a full sheet, so you should have a sheet of tracing paper too. So I'm just gonna kind of put some of the things that we're not using yet aside. I'm gonna set that aside. Visit my website, follow me on social. Woohoo! We'll get rid of that now. There we go. Okay, so now we're ready to start. Again, um, I am working from the floral sheet today, um, but you don't even have to work from any of the design sheets that I provide. You can easily start with your own drawing if that's something that you wanna do. Um, the process is gonna be the same whether you do your drawing or not. So if you do wanna use your own design, I would recommend going ahead and either printing it off the computer or drawing it onto a blank white piece of paper. Um, maybe go ahead and trace out your piece of material. You know, so you've got kind of a guideline on where to stay within. Um, but go ahead and put that image onto a piece of paper because with printmaking, um, anything that we carve and we print is backwards. When we print it, it becomes forward. So if you have a name, a number, um, a letter, something of that nature, obviously it's important which way it's facing. So to help you not overthink the backward, forward, flipping, reversing thing, go ahead and just draw it the way you want it onto the piece of paper and you'll see kind of how we work with that as we transfer it. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this um, piece up here. <clears throat> and again, um, you know, feel free to use whatever image you want. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just trace the whole image. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm kind of pushing hard. I, I wanna leave a good amount of graphite on the tracing paper, because that's gonna help us transfer the image to our block. 
And I'm not gonna trace every single little bit of it. I'm really just helping give like a guideline because I know I can always refer back to, um, to the piece. It's gonna be right next to me. So if you prefer to trace every single detail, that's cool too. Like you do what, what feels comfortable for you. For the sake of the video though, I don't think you wanna watch me tracing for, you know, five hours. So I will <laughs> keep it as short as possible. But like you can see, I'm, I'm really just being super liberal with kind of how, um, how I'm going about it. Just because I know I can look back at that piece of paper. It's gonna be right here next to me. I gotta say, this is like my favorite of the workshops that are offered because I'm a printmaker uh, and I love carving and I hope you will too. I hope it really makes you feel confident to try it yourself. All right, so you can see really, I did just do kind of like the basic outlines, but that's gonna give me enough to work with. I can add some other details back in as we're going. Um, <clears throat> if you want also, you can trace the border if you're worried about how you're going to place it on your piece, or you can just trace a couple corners. I'm not too worried. You can see through the tracing paper, so you'll see how we transfer it, um, and it's really not, not too, too complicated. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna take my piece of linoleum, and it is rubbery, and you can kind of feel that it has a little bit of like tack to it. It's a little like sticky almost, um, and that's gonna help us transfer the, the image. So I just kind of make sure I've got all the little honestly dog hair off of it and my dog is always in the studio with me so got to make sure I get the dog hair off and I'm gonna go ahead and lay my piece that I traced face down so now you can see I'm like gonna play with the placement a little get it to where I want it about right there in the middle for me right now is good and then once it's where I where I want it to go I really don't want to scoot it anymore I really want it to kind of stay where it's at so I'm gonna hold it down with one side and then I'm gonna take this side of my thumbnail and just kind of burnish really um, over the area that I've drawn. Again, I don't want it to scoot around um, because we are transferring our image. The graphite is making contact with our linoleum, which is what we want because we traced it really hard so there was like enough graphite to really leave a good mark on there all right i'm gonna check it so again i'm gonna check the progress but i'm gonna hold it down with that hand just peel this back omg look at that it's magic yay that's what we want i mean the image transferred perfectly um i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this because i can now continue to look at the drawing <clears throat> If for some reason you did that and it didn't work out very well and you have smudgy pencil all over your piece of linoleum, just take it to the sink and use a little soapy water like Dawn dish soap or something that kind of cuts through grease. Wash it off, the graphite will mostly come off, let it dry and try it again. It's really a very forgiving um, process up to a certain point. So, all right, so there is that. Now the graphite is just laying on the surface of the linoleum, so we still have the ability to like smudge it and move it around. This is where um, if you have a Sharpie marker at home or even just a ballpoint pen, this is super helpful to just trace the entire thing. I didn't feel like I needed to include that because um, all of us have something at home. I am a fan of Sharpies. I have, you know, at any given point in time, probably five or six of them in my bag that I carry with me, just because I love them. And I always forget that they're in there, so I throw more in. This is where, too, if you wanted, you could go ahead and go back in and um, add a little bit of the detail. So let me go ahead and do that here. If you want, you don't have to. Again, there's no, like, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. The only wrong way is not to do it. How do you like that? <laughs> but it's, it's what makes you feel comfortable. 
I really want to see what images you guys choose and um, if you choose to, to do your own images. I always kind of love when I have workshops where no one in the workshop picks an image that I've provided. It, it doesn't hurt my feelings, let me just tell you that. And it also like gives you a little ownership of the piece that you're making and then the confidence again to, you know, try it again. All right, I'm not gonna get too crazy because I know you don't wanna, you don't wanna watch that. Even though we're stuck in our houses, we got things to do, right? Yes, the answer is yes. All right, let's keep this going. Da, 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 da. Almost done here. Um, this is just such a great process. These blocks are really fun. They're very inexpensive. And now that you have the kit, you have kind of the tools that you need for the most part to make more of these pieces. You just need to go get another linoleum block, which again, they're not expensive. Um, and it's just kind of fun to have some in your house. So then <laughs> when quarantine hits, you are prepared. Okay, so that's gonna be good enough for me to get started for the video um, at this point. I am gonna put my Sharpie just up here because <clears throat> there's a trick that we can use with it in a little bit to, to help you see what you're doing. So now I am ready to start carving. Yeah, this is the exciting part. Um, if you've never carved anything before, don't worry. This material is super malleable and soft. It almost feels like an eraser. Um, but it's very, very easy to carve. It's great for beginners. Uh, as you continue on with this process, if you want to switch to a um, kind of harder linoleum, like a higher density kind of linoleum, there's a Battleship Gray um, linoleum that is my favorite. That's what I use. If you want more information, hit me up. I can get you info on that too. Um, your tool will work on all the pieces of linoleum. I don't recommend using these tools on wood. So, <clears throat> If you're interested in doing woodblock carving versus linoleum, um, again, hit me up and I will send you links to where you can buy um, kind of tools for that. But these are really just made for linoleum, so. Okay, so let's go ahead, I'm gonna scoot this over here. And our, this is our tool. So if you listen, you can hear a little rattle in there. Those are the interchangeable carving heads. Um, so the back of this just unscrews. There are our carving tools. And go ahead and screw that back on because it's more comfortable that way when you're carving. But it's really great because then when you're all done, you can unscrew it, put everything back in there, and um, you know, really keep it all kind of condensed. So um, I'm gonna show you a little bit about this tool first in case you accidentally have it come apart on you, then you'll know how to put it back together. This um, head up here, just unscrews and remember righty tidy lefty Lucy I know it's amazing how many people don't know that so um, this just unscrews and you don't ever have to take it all the way off but I am gonna take it all the way off just to show you what it's made of so then you won't feel weird if it does come off you can put it back together okay so inside that piece that unscrews there are two little metal pieces and they fit together like a little puzzle, kind of like um, an like a alligator claw or alligator mouth. Um, so that's that's really important. So once you see how they fit together, you just kind of put them back into that head and screw it back on. But before you tighten it all the way down, you can pick one of your tools. If you look at all of your little carving heads. Um, the sharp end, which you can feel very easily with your fingers, is the carving end. And the other end has this kind of rounded, um, polished look to it that has like a concave um, like section. That part is going to be inserted into this like head of this tool. And it's going to go between those two pieces that were like they're going to sandwich it. So those two pieces in there, you just, you can look in, it's really hard to show on the video, but when you have your own tool, you can look in there, slide that between the two pieces, and go ahead and tighten it down. And you wanna tighten it to the point where you can't get the tool, like you can't just pull it out, 
but don't go like crazy and get like pliers or anything to like tighten it, tighten it because you do want to loosen it to be able to change it out. So just finger tight is totally fine and we're ready to go. Um, so before we get started carving too, I want to show you the differences of the carving tool heads. Um, the one that I've inserted is a tool that is <laughs> everybody's favorite for some reason. It's really funny. It's the tiniest one. If you look at it facing you, you'll see that it's a very teeny tiny V gouge. It's shaped, the cutter part is shaped as a V. Um, so this is great for super fine detail, um, but it's not great for removing big areas of linoleum. So I'll kind of show you what pieces work best in what areas but um, everybody loves this one and they kind of get sucked into using it for their whole piece and that really causes a lot of frustration. So don't do that. It's super easy to like, look, unscrew it, change it out to a different one and you're ready to go. So don't feel like you're tied to one tool. Um, if you look at the other tools, there is a small U-gouge, there's a huge U-gouge, and then there's another bigger V gouge than that teeny tiny one. Um, and then like a chunk remover, you know, there are, there's an assortment of them in each of your kits. So, um, yeah, I am going to start with the teeny tiny tool cause I want to show you kind of what it does. All right, there we go. So I'm ready to start carving. Now on your image, um, all the designs that I provided were black and white and all of our ink pads are black ink pads and we're using white paper. So this is really a great way to get started so that you can see what to carve away, what not to carve away and how that process works. And then as you progress with it, you can get different colored ink pads, um, you know, different colors of paper, that sort of thing. But we're gonna try black and white first. Um, just because black and white is very straightforward. So basically anything that I want to appear white, we carve away. Anything that I want to appear black, we leave it on the linoleum. So what that means is if I, if I drew it with my Sharpie marker, all of these black lines, I'm going to leave them there. All of the white areas, even these white little things, I'm gonna carve away. And sometimes that freaks people out, but you really you don't have to. If you wanna do it the opposite way and invert it, that's fine too. You just have to like be prepared that anything you carve away will be white and anything you leave will be black. So that really means too that this area, this entire background is gonna be carved away on this piece. So that gives us a really nice area to practice with our carving tools and see kind of how the different tools feel. Um, there is a specific way to hold these and really whatever feels comfortable for you is best for you, but I'm gonna show you how I like it. Um, the end of it is rounded and I like to have that right in the palm of my hand, just like that. And I have it so the tool head is facing up because that's how you need it to be able to carve. And I like to put my index finger on this part that we can screw and unscrew. I like to have my index finger resting on that. So this is how I hold the tool. And you'll see while I'm carving that I might switch it around um, different ways, but for the most part, this is how I like to hold it. So I'm gonna go ahead and carve some of this background. Now I'm also going to make sure that I am continually carving my block away from my body. I'm not, please don't do this, <laughs> please. It's funny to say and it's funny to look at it, but you will catch yourself, believe me, you'll catch yourself doing it or you'll have your hand up here and you'll carve toward it. Look what could happen, bam, don't do it. I've done it a million times, it's not fun. Just try to keep any um, body pieces, body parts out of the way of the carving tool. Um, so sometimes too, I, I hold the block with my other hand while I carve. Look at that, boop, nice thin piece. Um, or other times I will wanna guide, help guide this tool. So I'll hold the block and I'll put my other finger on it and kind of help, help guide it. I know it's a little bit hard to see, so I'm gonna turn it over. This is what's great about this material too. Um, you have like a second side. 
And just for the sake of the video, you do not need to do this, but I, I want to like just show you kind of what the different carving heads do. And this is going to help it show up a little better for you. Okay. So play around with it. If you want to turn your block over and um, play on the other side, just like this, you can. If you want to just play in the background of your image, um, do that because then you have this other side that you could make another image from that sheet. So look at how easy this is cutting. I am not holding this super, super tight. Um, there are these really cool little squiggly lines. I'm gonna go ahead and switch the tool so you can see what some other ones do. Um, but really just play with it. Take your time, don't worry. Now see that takes out a different like width of line. If I wanna go even deeper, it'll take out a, a little bit wider piece. Sometimes they get stuck in here and I just tap it out. Let's do the massive U gouge. This is kind of like the tool, the destructive, destructive tool like head. You can really remove a lot of information very quickly. See like that. So again, play with it. Um, you know, take your time. This is really a cool process to um, to really wrap your head around and then like run out real quick, buy some pieces of linoleum so you've got them in your house and it gives you time to play with it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back to that tiny tool. And this I really love, I, I always kind of start a specific way and you don't have to start this way at all. Again, I'm pretty like, do what you want, you know, don't, you don't have to follow along with me. But I like to take this little tool and kind of go around the entire um, outside of my piece, like the whole outline of it. Look at all that. Because then I can go back with that bigger tool and almost go into the groove of where I've carved to remove the material I need to. Now, if you're noticing, I'm not leaving my block like completely stationary. I'm actually turning it a lot. Um, I like this technique. This is, I used to, I still am, but I used to work at an engraving shop. And so this is a lot of times with engraving, you hold the tool stationary the tool stationary in your hand and you're just turning the piece that you're working on. So um, also this is gonna be helpful so that you're not accidentally like carving back toward your body. <laughs> Remember, that's a no-no. Sorry if you can start to see like the top of my head. I'm trying to do this as far out from my body as I can so you can see it, but I gotta tell you that feels a little weird. So I'm going a little quick for the sake of the video, but I'm just going around the entire, you know, outside of my piece. And you can tell too, I'm removing material. You don't have to feel like you need to get like this big of a piece. This is going to show up in our print as well as my God, it's so little, I can't even pick it up. As well as this, um, anytime that you are actually removing material and you see that material um, kind of come off the block, that will, that will show up. That being said, there is no like edit undo or, um, <laughs> you know, back button on this. You have to, if you remove the material, it's gone. You can't glue it back in. It doesn't work that way. Um, so that's where really just take your time. But you know what, sometimes happy accidents occur and maybe you're like, okay, I can work with that. That's one thing about printmaking. We're all about the happy accidents um, because sometimes they make your piece better and no matter what, they help you learn for the next piece that you're making. So um, this is your, if this is your first time doing it, don't stress. This is like a really fun age old, relief technique so all right I am about done just for the sake of what we're doing here all right so you can see I have carved around about that much of the entire outside of my piece so I'm gonna go ahead and switch tools 
And I'm gonna use the larger V gouge, or yeah, larger V gouge. And I'm just gonna go right up to where I just carved away. It kind of makes me feel better. I don't have to get so close to my image um, because I have that little track there from that tiny little um, gouge that I used. Look at that, look at that. It feels so good. I mean, it really makes you feel like accomplished when you see this pile of um, carving like shards. And let's be honest, anything that makes me feel accomplished these days, I'm gonna take it. I, uh, I'm not refusing any of that. All right, so I'm almost done kind of carving around um, those pieces. Sorry, I'm moving around so much and I'm really trying not to let you um, see the top of my head. I am just like sitting here halfway in my pajamas, like halfway in real clothes, so nobody needs to see that. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna switch it now to the massive U gouge and go ahead and start removing the big background portion. Oh yeah, look at that. So since this material is very um, like bouncy, rubbery, when you get to the edges, you're gonna have to kind of play with it a little bit um, to get the pieces removed. You can also, you know, cut them and if they're still stuck, you can kind of pull them off with your fingers, that sort of thing. Um, but really just have fun with it. Sometimes too, it's really cool to carve the background away in a pattern or um, like carve it all the way like a sunburst because the ink pad might pick up a little bit of it and print it and then it's really beautiful. I really love those areas of relief prints that they don't look perfect. They look, you can see the carving lines. Um, I love that because then it makes it, you know, obvious that somebody created that. It wasn't just printed on the computer. All right, so we're getting there. I am going to carve away some inner pieces of this flower head, and then I'm gonna show you a trick. I know it's really hard as you're going to kind of see what does this actually look like? You know, what is it? I can't tell what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. That's kind of part of the part of the game here is that in printmaking, it's Sometimes you just don't ever know exactly what it's gonna look like till you pull a print. And that's something that I love in printmaking um, because I can be quite the control freak. I'm not afraid to admit it. And anytime that I have to like relinquish control, um, you know, not by choice, is probably healthy for me. So that's one of the parts that I really love is that you can put in all this work, you're not really sure what it looks like, and then you have to pull a print and kind of work from there. So I'm gonna show you a little trick though on these relief prints that you can do to kind of see what it's gonna look like. So you can see here, I'm, I've been carving this whole time and, and who really knows? I mean, let's just do some of this. Again, don't go as fast as I am. Take your time, enjoy it. It's very meditative too because you're, you know, you're thinking about black versus white and line versus like negative space. Um, but it's not like, it's not stressful. Don't be stressed about it. Like just really go with it. Let, let yourself, let your mind take a breather from all this craziness that's going on and really just think about each line that you're making. You'll feel better after the whole process like of letting go a little bit of this crazy, crazy world. Okay, so I've carved a lot up here and we don't really know what it looks like. Let me just move these aside. So if I wanna get a little idea of kind of what I'm dealing with, I can take my Sharpie marker and I, I'm not gonna use the um, pointed tip, I'm gonna kinda use the side. 
and just color almost like a rubbing. Just hit the surfaces because the surface is where the ink pad is also going to hit. So just allow it to hit those surfaces and then you can see, okay, I still have some areas that I want to remove and now you can go ahead and go back and, um, and do that. Just like that. I'm going to switch the tool and remove a little more. So, you know, feel free to do that with the marker. If you don't want to do that, that's totally cool. Um, when we pull our first print, if you want to go back and carve more, you can. You just, you know, clean your block off, go back in, carve more, and print another one. So. Okay. There, look at that coming right along. That's looking, I mean, looking similar um, to, to the piece there. So I'm not going to bore you with um, carving the entire thing on the video. You kind of know what you're doing at this point. You know what the tools, how to switch the tools, how to um, kind of play with the background. You know, if you do get in too deep on this side and you're like, oh my god, I just don't know, um, go ahead and flip it over and do it again on the other side. Like I said, this is this material is great because you get two for one, like kind of more bang for your buck, um, and you can play with it that way. So, uh, but yeah, for the sake of the video, I really don't want to bore you. So I'm gonna go ahead and pretend like I'm all done. I'm gonna put my carving heads back into the carving tool. It's really a good idea to do that just because if you throw this in a drawer, um, like your art drawer or craft drawer or whatever, then when you reach in, it's not gonna, you're not gonna like stab yourself with it. So um, yeah, really nice self-contained little tool. I'm gonna put that aside. I am done with my Sharpie marker right now. And this, let's get all of that debris. That's progress, look, oh, progress. I feel so, so accomplished. Feels good. All right. Um, so this is a block that I have already done. It doesn't have as much detail as kind of what I was going into showing you, but um, I did it last night so that I would have something like, I'm like Julia Childs. I'm going to go ahead and print for you. Um, this is the finished recipe, and this was our in progress recipe. That was a really bad impersonation of her, um, and she's amazing. So I don't want anybody to think I was making fun of her because she's awesome. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this aside because that was just our little piece for the video. Here is our block that we're gonna be printing on, and when it's time to print, I really like to make sure, you know, I'm working with a little. A clean space if you want to go ahead and take a piece of I don't know computer paper maybe lay it down um, this isn't a super messy way to print but look at my fingers I'm already getting like a little bit messy just because I've already printed this block so if you want to lay a piece of paper down to protect whatever surface you're working on that's cool but what we're gonna do is Take a piece of paper of that nice off-white paper, and I kind of like to use my block and see, okay, I'm looking at the size of my block. Sorry, I'm like layering whites on the camera, which is not good. Okay, there we go. There's the piece of paper. I'm gonna lay my block down on it, and you can really see like, all right, here's my margin that I wanna kind of stay within. So I wanna try to put my block in the middle of the paper. Um, now, if you want, you know that you've got this floral pattern. If you want to go ahead and print that on the bottom corner and then use this as stationery and maybe um, get back into snail mail writing uh, right now and send some notes to the friends that we're not allowed to see, um, that's cool too. You can place it wherever you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and place it in the center of the page. So I'm gonna get my clean white protective piece back lay my paper down on it, my nice clean printing paper, and I'm gonna go ahead and ink up my block. So you have um, an ink pad in your kit. The You might have a different brand than the one that I'm working on. I, I basically, I like a whole bunch of different ones, so they're all black or charcoal 
um, very dark colors, but they they all work the same way. So you just take the lid off, and if you kind of look at it, you can see that the ink pad is raised from the back of this. So this isn't like the ink pad that you would like stamp, you know, in the library. I don't know if they still do that now. They used to do that in schools, you know, with have the library stamp pad. Um, but this is raised because we're really gonna be able to ink it um, and get all of the surfaces that we want. So I just like to hold it. Look at my, look at me, I'm a mess. Of course, I can't stay clean on video with you. Oh my God, uh, how embarrassing. Um, so go ahead and hold the edges of this ink pad like that. And we're just going to literally dab our our block so you'll be able to see really well on yours when it's that nice fresh like white linoleum um, you'll be able to see really well where you have ink and where you don't but I like to go over it a couple different times you can see I'm going in different directions I'm just rotating that block make sure I've got good coverage there so when I think it's all covered with ink I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on that because that's gonna stay good that's gonna stay nice for a while and then I'm gonna pick up my block. Let's go ahead and put it down in the middle. Now, once it makes contact, don't move it. Leave it where it's at. You can always trim your paper if you're a little like off, um, but don't move the block. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and use the palm of my hand. Now, I'm not like, ur, ur. I'm not, going crazy with it, but I am applying some good pressure. Um, I don't wanna like squeeze the rubber so that it just goes whoosh and we get ink in all of our lines, but I do want it to make good contact. This is something too that I gave you multiple pieces um, <clears throat> of paper. Once you do one, you can really feel kind of what you need to do for the second one. All right, now I'm going to hold my paper down, lift my block up, ta-da, yay! So you can see all of these kind of textural lines in the background, that's from the way that I carved it. If you don't like that, you can just clean your block off, go ahead and carve those bits away. Maybe change how you're inking it um, and ink it up a little differently. That's cool too, but I really love these because it makes it look like it was carved by a person. I mean, it was carved by a person. Moi, ha <laughs> ha, it was carved by me. But I like that it shows that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of our one print. Now I did put in the list of materials that if you had, um, you can try to use. Uh, a wooden spoon, I use this a lot for printmaking. I obviously don't uh, cook with this thing anymore, but <laughs> like you can see all the ink on it. Um, let me show you how to use this if you want. If you don't though, I mean obviously what I just did was fine too. So when you're ready to make your second print, you're gonna have to go ahead and ink it up again. You have to ink it up each time you're gonna make a print. All right, second time, there's always a little more ink on there than two. Go ahead and put the lid back on that. Let's get a piece of fresh paper. Now, when I'm doing um, like the wooden spoon technique, I like to lay the paper on top of the print versus what we just did, lay the block on top of the paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay this on top. And again, once it's there and it makes contact, don't, don't be scooting it around. Um, and this is where you can really, you can hold it steady and with a wooden spoon, very gently, burnish your image. This is a little more um, difficult with the material that we're working with. If you get into using the Battleship Gray Linoleum and instead of using an ink pad, you use a brayer and um, you roll out the ink, but this is, this is a great way to print with that, um, which is kind of what I do. And I don't know, I'll probably post a video um, in the coming weeks of using that kind of linoleum and that kind of printing technique, just so you can see. All right, so I used my little wooden spoon. Now I'm gonna just lift it up and I, it might have scooted, we'll see. Ah, there it is. 
So you can see how it is a little bit darker than our first one, and that can just be because when we printed the second one, there was already a little ink on our um, block. So yeah, I think this is really beautiful. Again, if you wanna carve the backgrounds out, um, just take your block and a little soapy water, Dawn dish soap works well, wash it off and um, yeah, and then, then go back in and keep carving. Um, I do wanna talk about kind of when you make a print, um, the way to sign it. So we always use pencils to sign it, don't sign it with a pen. And I like to put my signature in the bottom left-hand corner. So my name is Julie Wall. And if I were going to limit the addition, I would put, you know, this is one of five. If I do five prints total, this is one of five. This would be two over five. But if I don't wanna just make five prints, if I wanna keep it open, cause I wanna make these for my friends and family for Christmas, I'll just leave that open and I might just put 2020, just write the year. So there we have it. Um, that is in a nutshell, the basics of um, starting your linoleum carving. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you feel confident to do your own piece. Um, you know, feel free to refer back to the video as much as you need. And if you have questions, you know, hit me up or um, comment below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. And please post and share and tag me in your photos because I really want to see what you're making. I miss you guys and I want to see you in my studio, but that's just, this is the best way for right now. So send me a picture, tag me in it, let me see what you're working on. And again, be sure to stop by my website and check out the other workshop kits that are available to you um, as this time kind of goes on. So yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to set you free into the world of linoleum carving. Um, have fun, stay safe, stay healthy. Love you guys.